what if I told you that creating an embroidered portrait of your pet could be as easy as a paint by numbers? Hi everyone, I am Michelle Staub of Stitching Sabbatical and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my new book, Pet Portrait Embroidery, and show some of the projects that you'll learn how to make. Now, I am self-taught and I have been learning embroidery since 2014 and I have been selling my hand-stitched custom pet portraits full-time since 2015 and I wrote this book to share everything I learned along the way. Not only will you learn embroidery basics, like an overview of supplies you'll need and how to transfer patterns, but you'll also learn four different embroidery stitches and how to make your very own custom thread painted pet portraits. I walk you through everything from choosing a good reference photo if you're making a custom piece, to creating your own pattern, and even choosing the perfect color of thread to capture your pet's fur. I start you off with some more simple outline patterns that will teach you how to embroider different lengths and textures of fur in a more minimalistic style. And then from there, you can make your way through to the more detailed portraits or just jump right in. Don't get intimidated by the more detailed patterns. They start off basic and get progressively more complicated so you can build your skill level as you go. Each detailed pattern has a full step-by-step -step guide of the best way to tackle the portrait. And there's also a full color guide that will show you where to use what thread color so you don't get overwhelmed. Over the years, I've curated the best thread color palettes to capture different colors of fur, and I'm sharing them all with you. Mix and match the provided color palettes or use them as a starting point to build your own. You can also use the patterns I share and stitch them as is or edit them to make them look like your own pet. Take your portrait to another level by adding a flower crown or a floral garland using a few simple stitches. And there are also two full alphabets and banners so you can customize your piece with names and dates. I put so much love into making this book and I hope it shows. Let me share some of the patterns you'll be stitching. Here you can see all of the outline portraits I made for the book and actually all the patterns in this book are made for the same um, size of hoop which makes things a little easier. So let's go through them. Here is one of the portraits. It starts off pretty simple. Then there's this dog with a leafy garland and there's actually a pattern for that garland um, in the back of the book as well. This dog has a little bow tie and there's a pattern for that included. And here's the last more complicated dog pattern. To start off the cat patterns, there's this one with really basic short fur and it's really customizable. It's kind of like a blank canvas. Then there's this tabby, which is a bit harder. There's also this cat with long fur. And there's this hairless cat and an example of the hairless cat with a flower crown. And there's the pattern for this flower crown in the back of the book. And you can actually add that flower crown to any of the patterns in the book, even the detailed ones. Now for the more complicated portraits, um, I was very intentional with what dogs and cats I wanted to use as examples. Um, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be sure to cover the widest range of different fur types and colors and examples of facial features. So let's go through them. The detailed patterns start off um, more simple with a basic black dog and a white cat, um, but with some tweaking on the color palettes, you could also make a black cat or a white dog. Next is the Stalmation, which will show you how to make abrupt color changes and also how to stitch a collar. Moving on to the Siamese cat with beautiful blue eyes and a uniquely brown and black shade of fur. The pug pattern here will teach you how to handle wrinkles and I just love pugs. They're so interesting to embroider, definitely one of my favorites. Following the pug pattern, there's also this gray cat with a bit of a scrunched face. Um, this pattern will show you how to handle the cracks in the fur that sometimes appear while providing a more simple color palette so it's not too overwhelming. Next we have a cat with long fur and a great example of how ginger fur can be both brown and orange. After that is this golden retriever pattern. Um, blonde fur can be really difficult to capture, so I wanted to be sure I included an example of it. And there's also a really great example of the profile view and the dog's teeth and tongue. 
And we can't forget to include a portrait of a dog with its ears up. This corgi portrait is a great example of that and also shares a more rich orange color palette. Next is this tabby cat portrait, which is really complicated, but also super fun. Next is this Maltese portrait, which will show you how to tackle long straight fur and also those little lip hairs. And finally, this poodle mix portrait, which is probably the hardest pattern in the whole book. Um, this introduces a rich brown color palette and curls, which is going to be really difficult. I am so excited to finally be able to share all of my knowledge and tips and tricks with you. If you would like to learn more about me or follow along as I work on my own pet portrait commissions, you can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, all at Stitching Sabbatical. I've also created a Facebook group specifically for this book where you can share your progress and get help from others who are working on the same pattern or even from me directly. The group is called Pet Portrait Embroidery, Learn the Art of Thread Painting, and I hope you join. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you enjoy the book. Bye!